Introducing a priori. Hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So, I am Jagan Tanika Chalam, uh, working in Kone. I am a product owner uh, for the shoot casting. Here I also oversee digital factory manager and uh, operator admin as well. So I have nearly 16 years of experience, so 10 years from uh, various manufacturing and uh, 5 years from uh, casting experience. So I have been associated with Kone for past three and a half years. <clears throat> so here comes uh, today's agenda. Uh, so I will start with Kone. So most of you may not know what is Kone. Is. Kone is, uh, uh, what I, I'll, I'll just explain about uh, what is Kone, what we do and uh, who we are. And then uh, as a shoe casting team, we are facing uh, some day-to-day -day challenges. So I'm planning to explain about those challenges and uh, as a shoe casting team, uh, how over the period we have uh, evolved ourselves. That's also what I'm gonna explain. Then uh, we have few success, success stories. I'm, I'm going through those and then uh, we have uh, future plans. So that's I'm planning to explain it. Here comes Kone. So Kone is one of the leading elevator and escalator uh, manufacturing company. Uh, we also provide innovative solution on uh, installation, um, modernization, and maintenance of those elevator and escalators. And we also provide uh, uh, industrial automatic building doors. Kone listed in uh, Helsinki Stock Exchange in the year of 1967. And uh, here comes some factors about Kone. So founded in 1910, we have 100 plus years of history. And talking about sales, uh, we have uh, 10.5 billion as of uh, 2021. We have more than 60,000 em uh, employees for over 60 plus countries. And uh, we have 550,000 happy customers. There are already 1.5 million units in service. Our basic our theme is dedicated to people flow. Here comes our global footprint. So we have nine R&D centers, nine manufacturing centers, and uh, we have uh, close to uh, distribution centers close to 100 countries. So we, are, we have spread that all over the world. So here comes our day-to-day -day challenges. So when we talk about elevator, elevator is the most uh, customized product uh, uh, based on the customer needs. So when we talk about the customization, so we have multiple variants under uh, same product number. So configuring uh, the drawings every time that takes uh, more time from our team. And uh, when I say customize, so we have wider range of products and uh, most of them are low volume products. When we talk about safety, so safety differs country to country and region to region. So every country will have their own safety codes. So it, 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 the material uh, changes and the process changes and so on. <clears throat> when we talk about competence, so uh, each and every project requires uh, different competence uh, requirement from the shoe cast engineer. So he, 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 he might be knowing casting, uh, forging, uh, PCBA, wireless and so on. So different competence required for the uh, shoe cast engineer are you need to uh, wait for the other other uh, senior person or uh, subject matter expert uh, support. So there are a lot of dependency required or uh, competence required. When we talk about uh, design hydration, so um, to keep us in the market, our design team continuously working on uh, design updates. So they will be coming up quick updates and uh, asking us to do shoe casting and uh, benchmark with the previous versions. So updating the shoe cost for every project that always a uh, big challenge for us. So uh, the gentleman just explained before, like uh, when uh, uh, comes to result, the repeatability and the reproducibility. So we have team members uh, with uh, different portfolio, different experience. So each and every one will come up with uh, their own numbers, their own process routing, their own cycle time calculations. So when we talk about uh, the repeatability and reproducibility on numbers, that's always a bit challenging. Yeah, this is our uh, way of working. The slides may look a bit difficult, 
but uh, if you understand the core of this slide, uh, it will be easy to uh, go through all, the, all those things. So under below, uh, we have mentioned uh, uh, what is our process and the milestones, like case started, case registered, analysis ready, case completed or reviewed, case closed. So uh, as a shoe casting team, we are working in the agile methodology uh, and we are working on the sprint mode. When I say sprint mode, the sprint lead time is two weeks, which means if you are taking any task or uh, cases that need to be completed within two weeks. That's our lead time. So every sprint starts with sprint planning, uh, where we will be discussing about uh, the case priorities and uh, other stuff. So anyone in the Kone, they can, um, like a design engineer or a project engineer, they can initiate a shoe cost request. Once the shoe cost request is uh, raised or initiated, the category person will have a uh, meeting with the particular uh, design engineer or with the uh, project engineer, and we'll go through about uh, what is the scope of project and what is the purpose of project. Once purpose and scope is uh, finalized, we will be considering that case as uh, case created, and then we'll be setting up a call with the uh, stakeholders to collect data like uh, 3D drawings, 2D drawings, material info, volume, and so on. Once uh, we have all the data in our table, we will be considering that case as registered. Once the case is registered, it will be uh, listed down on our uh, uh, shoe cast backlog. So during the sprint planning, we will be discussing about uh, the case prioritization. So uh, the high value and the low effort case will be always prioritized. So we'll go with the high value cases. And uh, uh, either we will be taking one or two bigger cases where all the team members will work on towards one goal, or we will be taking some bunch of uh, smaller cases. And we will be ensuring minimum two people are working in each case to just ensure a real team work is happening or not. <clears throat> okay. So uh, once uh, sprint planning is agreed, we will start with the analysis. So uh, when we say analysis, we mostly depends on a priori. I would say 60 to 70 percent we are depending on a priori, still 30 to 40 percent. Uh, we are uh, <clears throat> still going with the manual customized template. During this analysis, uh, we also conduct a daily scrum, which means a daily stand-up call. That's 10 to 15 minutes, uh, where we will be addressing uh, the obstacles and uh, uh, dependency need of a team. So we will be addressing those so that we are in just ensuring there is no showstopper during the sprint. Once the analysis is ready, we will be having a peer review within peers and the internal sign off with the uh, product owner and the chapter leader, where we will be fine tuning our results and numbers. Once uh, results and numbers finalized, we will be setting up a call with the stakeholder where we will be explaining our results. If stakeholders are already happy with our numbers, then we will consider that as a case completed or reviewed, or if they give some uh, feedback on uh, reworks, then we'll be working on uh, those numbers, and uh, again, we'll be setting up a call uh, to complete the case. Once case is reviewed and completed, we'll be waiting uh, for those uh, results to be utilized by our design team. So uh, it takes some lead time, like, uh, so uh, they will not take immediately uh, those uh, uh, changes, but uh, we'll be uh, ensuring that uh, we'll be continuously following up our results. Once our results has been uh, successfully utilized, we will be closing that case. And we do have, uh, as a sprint ritual, we do also have sprint retro at last. That is, we are conducting at every end of sprint where we will be asking our team members to share their learnings uh, during the sprint. So we will be recording those in the two buckets. That's called what went well during the sprint and what could be improved during the sprint. So uh, to, to just ensure uh, our team continuously improving, that's we are calling it as uh, Kaizen actions. And uh, we are also asking the new, uh, junior members to share their learnings to just ensure uh, the learnings is already on the table or not. 
this comes our team setup. So we do have uh, two teams. One is mechanical and another one is electrical. So all the two teams take care of uh, five subsystems uh, of an elevator. We do have uh, some common services. Uh, that's product owner, chapter lead, and head of shoot casting will be taking care of the uh, two teams. When we talk about process, uh, almost I would say like 90% uh, of uh, products we are uh, covering under our shoe casting. So I've listed down uh, some of the process that we are using. So most of the process we are capable to do with the manual customized template. And uh, as I said, they are 60 to 70%. So still we are covering with the upgrade. <clears throat> Here comes our success matrix. So until 2017, uh, we mostly dependent on a manual template and individual contributions uh, towards uh, uh, cases. So uh, the junior members always uh, awaiting for uh, 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 subject matter expert or senior person support on uh, critical process, process like machining, casting. So we felt that uh, there is no real teamwork happening. And again, the senior members are subject matter experts uh, we are working on their own targets. So, so everyone has their own targets. So this subject matter expert or senior person couldn't be able to spend time with the junior members. So uh, we found that uh, there is lack of teamwork. And uh, uh, this manual customized template also needed with the subject matter expert dependency. To overcome this, we have, we have come up with uh, two, two ideas that's introducing Agile to increase the teamwork and also uh, customization of operary to reduce the subject matter expert uh, dependency. So once uh, we, in the year of uh, 2018, we have done a lot, lot of uh, customization uh, on operary and also we have done some pilot on Agile working. So in the Agile, uh, we asked the junior member to lead the case and we just ensured uh, related subject matter expert are part of uh, the team so that uh, the junior member is uh, free to do mistake and learn through that mistake. So subject matter expert will take care of uh, the, those learnings. And uh, when we talk about uh, productivity, after uh, introducing of uh, uh, Agile and uh, customization of operary, as I said earlier, the repeatability and the reproducibility got increased due to operary involvement. And uh, after uh, introducing of Agile, uh, the reduction and uh, consolidation of reports, reviewing reports, peer review, those things uh, got reduced. You can see already uh, those, uh, 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 I mean, displayed in uh, two charts. So until 2017, 2018, our case lead time was uh, high. And uh, after introducing this Agile and uh, operary, our uh, lead time got reduced in a much better way. And uh, we can able to sustain the numbers even in 2020, 2021, uh, yeah, still we are, we are sustaining that. And talking about number of projects, you can see uh, year on year it got increased. Here comes one of our success story. So you can see uh, five products, five are similar products that's used in five different regions. Our top management asked it to do some benchmarking on these five products, and uh, we have given with uh, some shorter lead time to do this case. Uh, talking about criticality about this project, each and every product is having more than 100 parts. I say 600 parts we have done shoe casting within a short time frame, and the complex supply chain also affected uh, our, our shoe, uh, I mean, the lead time. And uh, competence, of course, uh, different competence required for each and every product. So uh, to overcome all those issues, we have used 100% operate casting to ensure uh, the repeatability and reproducibility on the numbers, and also similar subassembly given to the same uh, shoe cast engineer, so that he can understand the design differences and the cost differences, and he, he came up with the report uh, so, uh, uh, on, on the uh, factors. On a business outcome, I would say like uh, uh, by seeing the results, uh, the product owners already uh, uh, higher than the product force, I would say like 11%. So 
based on our results and our identification design team can able to harmonize the products and the other products also got cheaper now even with this product 4 we have uh, even reduced the price by another 4 to 5% by accommodating uh, economical design from other products uh, maybe i would say like uh, now the product 4 looks 16 15 to 16% cheaper than this uh, old product on design. So this is one of our achievement. Here comes uh, sensitivity analysis. Here uh, our design team came up with uh, some quick design and asked us to do uh, cost analysis and uh, give solution uh, for the cost reduction. So we have uh, done uh, some volume migration to understand uh, what is the uh, difference uh, on volume uh, iteration and then we have done uh, to understand what is the cost difference between region yeah we know that italy will be always cheaper than other two regions but still uh, how much cheaper uh, what is the percentage what is the number that's our understand so we have done with this region hydration and also we have done some material hydration like whether it is uh, cheaper to go with the bar and tube or whether it is cheaper to go with the sheet metal we also done some uh, routing anal uh, iteration to understand whether it's cheaper to go with uh, uh, soft tooling or hard tooling. So based on this analysis, by using worst case scenario and best case scenario, we have produced a report to the design team where they can able to understand our results. And now the design is very much streamlined and uh, looks better in, in terms of costing point of view. This is uh, my final slide, uh, our future plans. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we are doing uh, some, uh, we are, we are uh, using operary uh, 60 to 70%. Moving forward, we are planning to uh, use this operary so one-stop solution. So we are planning to uh, uh, do a more customization towards other process also, which we are not already using it. When we talk about automation, uh, as I said earlier, we have multiple variants. Uh, our our uh, effort mostly goes towards uh, uh, configuring, configuring of uh, drawings. To overcome that, we are planning to deploy this uh, CAD robot. So uh, CAD robot will take care of uh, uh, design configuration. And uh, that, that can able to communicate with the operator. So our uh, effort would be reduced by a lot. And uh, coming on to project catalog, so we are planning to list down all our shoe cost in uh, uh, some kind of tool so that uh, whenever uh, the design team asks for the quick updates on material or on original data libraries, so we can able to do some quick analysis and can able to deliver the results within a short frame of time. Uh, last but not least, uh, so uh, we have a dedicated VAV team in our Kone. So as a shoecasting team, we are doing VAV or DTV here and there. We are not doing in a much uh, more more uh, way. So to work, um, uh, moving forward in future, we are planning to uh, develop or we are planning to enhance our DTV cap capability or VAV capability in future. So that's all from my side. Thank you. A priori, making profitability and sustainability a reality for a better world.